an enormous conflict of interest from top to bottom. That is what one critic says regarding what we uncovered about a state board with the power to overrule your local school board. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. I'm Rory Johnston. And I'm Carrie Sharp. The State Charter School Commission has the power to order taxpayer money be spent on those privately operated schools that some districts say they just don't need. This month, that commission will hear appeals from Founders Classical Academy, a group previously associated with Michigan's controversial Hillsdale College. Founders wants to open schools in Franklin and Hendersonville, that's over the objection of the local school boards. This week, that commission could overrule the Metro Nashville School Board and allow the opening of two more privately operated charter schools in the Antioch area, even though the district says it has its own plans to open new schools there. And the commission will hear an appeal from a group that wants to open a taxpayer funded a school for at risk students in Clarksville again over the objection of the local school board. News Channel 5 chief investigative reporter Phil Williams has been digging into this commission and those potential conflicts. And the commission that we're talking about is not composed of school superintendents, school board members or teachers. It's an unelected group of true blue believers and now even some Republicans are starting to question whether they should have this kind of power. We have a lot of items on the agenda requiring action. It's an unelected body given the authority to overrule local elected school boards. As a commission, our charge is to be nationally recognized as a top tier quality authorizer in a state where a strong portfolio of public charter schools exist. Composed of charter school advocates, the Tennessee State Public Charter School Commission, handpicked by the governor and confirmed by the legislature, has the authority to authorize taxpayer funding to go to schools operated by private entities, entities whose applications were rejected at the local level. Unfortunately, you had some school districts before this that would say no to every charter school because philosophically they just don't want a charter school. Republicans created the commission after charter schools ran into opposition in Nashville and Memphis, counties run by Democrats. They have set up the system to circumvent local governments and local control with a hand-picked state charter commission. Nashville Democrat John Ray Clements argues that the governor chose people who he expected would carry out his agenda. When you look at the, the state charter commission, what do you see? I see an enormous conflict of interest from top to bottom on the state charter commission. Conflict of interest forms filed by the nine commissioners shows that every one of them reported no conflicts, but the commission includes two members of the board of SCORE, a pro-charter lobbying group, along with SCORE's former executive director, Jamie Woodson, who according to the group's tax returns, has served as a $200,000 a year consultant. Two other members work with pro-charter groups that get funding from SCORE. So SCORE has worked for years and spent a lot of money, millions of dollars, trying to push charter schools. The future of schools are uh, ecosystems. And one of the commission members, Derwin Sisnett, will be appearing before the commission himself this month to lobby for approval of a charter school that he wants to start that was rejected by Memphis Shelby County Schools. And this commissioner does, you know, does have a school that he will be the person who is presenting to the appeal to us. And so we asked him to step aside. So Commission Chair Tom Griscom recently told lawmakers that Sisnick would recuse himself from the next round of votes. Sisnick School, Binghamton Community School, is funded in part by SCORE. That's a direct conflict of interest. And every Tennessean who values public schools should view this as a complete lack of transparency and a violation of the public trust. As part of our ongoing revealed investigation, we had obtained the results of this poll commissioned by SCORE that shows Tennesseans of all political persuasions think these sorts of decisions should be made at the local level. Now with charter schools attempting to move into the suburbs, even Republican lawmakers are skeptical about the role of the state. Uh, when it comes to a final say, of whether or not there would be a charter school in a in a an LEA's district. Is it my local LEA that has that choice or is it you? In any appeal situation, the um, decision of the commission is final. 
When charter school commission officials recently appeared before that legislative committee, some Republicans seemed shocked to hear that the commission they created could overrule their local school boards. That's not good, I don't think. When you can come in and override our elected officials, I don't like it. I'm in a total agreement with Senator Crow. We created this commission. We as the legislature made this determination. And Sumner I'm County Republican William Lamberth recently appeared before a public hearing of the Charter School Commission to urge them to uphold his school district's rejection of a charter school applicant there. But we're looking at each of these applications on their own merits. And the one that applied in Sumner County just didn't rise to the level of quality that we expect. What they're starting to realize, or I hope realize, is this agenda is designed to carry, you know, to spread charter schools in all 95 counties. My testimony to the Charter Commission was not no never to charter schools in Sumner County. It was no to this particular charter school. Every single one of these should be evaluated on the merits of that application, and that's it. Lampert says Republicans are now watching the Charter School Commission to make sure it doesn't become a rubber stamp for the charter school sector. And the answer shouldn't be always no, but it shouldn't be always yes either. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? There we go. We're good to go. Thank you. One of the commissioners, Jamie Woodson, got back with me and said that SCORE does not take a position on appeals up pending before the commission, and she has a policy of recusing herself from any votes where SCORE has funded the applicants, which she says she will do in the case of that one school this month, but critics say this shows just how cozy these relationships are. Indeed. Keep following it. We will. As always, thanks, Thank Phil. Phil. Now, this is just the latest in Phil's ongoing Revealed series that takes an in-depth look at the lawmakers and policies that impact our lives every day. You can see those stories online right now at newschannel5.com.